Kia ora. I'm Courtney. Um, I'm a 39 year old mother of six. And Ma is my eldest baby. She's 21. She contracted pneumococcal meningitis when she was five months old. So she has cerebral palsy, epilepsy, hydrocephalus. She's feisty. She's my homie. She's my girl and she's pretty cool. Matariki is our second eldest girl. She's 12, going on 25. Lots of energy, very smart girl, beautiful girl. She's my great help and great friend. My husband, Matetu, is my rock. We're an undeniable team. Love him to bits. Our baby, Tahu Matua, is seven. He has autism. He's our smallest superhero, full of energy, full of surprises. My family is loyal and kind and humble. Full of superheroes. <laughs> Together, Courtney and Matatu have six kids. Three of them live at home. She's um, got a sore stomach, she's got wind. Mm. So she's just had a big burp, but she's still got more. So she's just uncomfortable. And it's first day back at school. She's obviously non-verbal, but she talks to me with her eyes, like um, her right eye can look where she wants to look sometimes. It's a very intense relationship, 21 years in the making. When Damar got sick at five months old, it was suggested that maybe it would be better for her and for us as a family that she goes into a home. Her disabilities were so severe that there wasn't much hope for her to have any quality of life. Obviously, that didn't sit right for me. She wasn't supposed to survive many times, and many times she's tried to die. But I go by Dema. If she's ready and it's her time, it's her time. We just take a day at a time, and today she's well and she's great. She's just celebrated her 21st birthday. Thank you all for coming. Because the other weekend she was in hospital and we didn't know what she was doing. But she's always strong. And she gets through everything. And thank you all for coming. <laughs> to go to Nan's house. Yeah. One birthday party. For your birthday party? Yes. When is your birthday? On 8th February. Yes. How old are you going to be? A wizard. You're going to be eight. Eight. Ko waito ingoa. Ko waito ingoa. Ingoa? Ko waito ingoa. Ko waito ingoa. Ko ingoa. Tahumatua's autism, that's not all he is. He's a boy with autism. 
he's not just autistic. That's one part of him. He's so much more than that, and his autism gives him just these abilities that not a lot of us have. So we don't see it as a hindrance of any type. He, and he's very affectionate and very able and strong. The ma and Tahumatua their needs are very loud and very obvious, and so we make sure that we put a lot of time into the big kids. We probably worry about the big kids more. It's just about embracing whoever you are, and I think that's what we try and teach them. And so I think different is really cool. I love different. And now they are really compassionate people. Matariki is Matitu's oldest daughter. So I met Matariki just before she was one, so she's one of my babies that I didn't have to give birth to, which is amazing. It's been a, a relationship that we've developed day over the years, and now I think um, I'm so grateful for her. She like constantly goes and never stops. Yeah, she's consistent with that with me and Tahumatua. Like, if she's having, she's still tired, she'll still talk about our day with us, talk about everything. Did you have to give that note back? Yeah. Because oh. I think the details were on there. There's, like, no stop button for her. And she just keeps going and going. If she's tired, she still makes us a cry. Yeah, she constantly keeps going. Dema has caregivers for 11 hours per week. Why is she so tired? What's been happening? Oh, first day back. Yeah. Sue is a part-time carer. Are you? As well. I love it. She was initially a challenge. There's no shortcuts with her. She can open that mouth and tell you what's what. In no uncertain terms if it's not going her way. It'll miss high maintenance. I think I don't know if I've cut out for this, but I wouldn't have it any other way now. I'm pretty protective over her. I think as a all her support workers, once they get to know her and get into her routine, it's not your routine, it's her routine. And it's, it works. So having someone like Sue coming in is really important for me. She's honest, she's, she's good at her job, she's prompt, she's reliable, and that's really important. And it's taken me a long time to find people that I'd let, I let in. Demar is my inspiration. When I'm having a really bad day, I'll look at her and think, you know, my problems pale in comparison. I wish more people could get to interact with just this one little girl. Could make such an impact on their mental status. At, at the top of the list for me is you need to love her. You just need to love her. We can sort out all the, the nappies and the hair and we can do all that. But you need to love her. I need her to feel that from you. Otherwise, it's never going to work. It won't work. Nearly done. Nearly. And I now that I had control issues. You know, I let go a little bit. But with regards to her, a tiny bit. Mm. There's just too much at stake if I let go too much. Mm. day for me starts at 3am, 4am, 5am. Demar is up a lot during the night, um, so today I've been up since 5. It's always really busy. It's not a whole lot of downtime, but it is what it is. No. Eat your breakfast, son. Demar is tube fed three times a day. She's been fed like this for 15 years. When Demar first got sick, I was only 18. It felt like I wasn't credible because I was young and I was a new mum. And Demar was only five months old when she got sick. Uh, half the battle was being taken seriously. Bye, son. Say goodbye to Dad. Good one. Here. Oh, you. Oh, you. Squeeze. Your turn. Come on. Bye, doll. Have a good day. She's all. Yes? You stand up quick. I want to have, have my picnic. Mm. I'm going to have a picnic. 
on Ben Holly's Little Kingdom. Having a son with autism for me was quite exciting, actually. Cool, how does this kid learn? The Mars one person and, and Taumatua is, is a whole new ball game. When, when he was diagnosed, I was like, wow, what does that mean? And, and what do we do? And then what will he do? And, and I found it exciting that this kid was like, oh, he's got some really cool things that he does. I think for me, I reacted a little bit differently to it's Courtney. Oh, I was broken. Yeah, it's, uh, I didn't know actually what it meant. So I Googled it. The first uh, picture on whatever Google was, was toys stacked up and toys in a line and that's what sundered. And he said, oh, he's got it. That's what I thought to myself and I was, you know, having a bit of a tonguey about it. What I've learnt is he could do and far exceed any sort of expectation that I would have had for him, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. And um, we've started to see some of those mm -hmm. things already. He's a genius, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our family's just got different needs. Still ne needs, like every other family with kids. Ours are just different, really different. I think we're lucky, I think we were picked to have two superheroes in our family. So Kia Street Specialist School here in Rotorua, uh, Dema first started here in 2007, so she's been here for a long time. Good. Dema's going to put her name up and just touch there. There we go. Well done, Dema. Yeah. Jama, Jama, we've got her name up in photo so she can go up to the front. There we go. Here you are, Jama. That's your name here. It's all done. Yes. Matua started here at base school earlier this year. Teachers here, um, I think, all have a special quality to them. We've certainly got a whole raft of wonderful people that work here, so we're really lucky. So now that Demar's turned 21, um, her funding changes slightly, so we'll be sourcing new funding for her education. So I'm here at Care Street School. I'm meeting with CCS to talk about Demar's transition next year. This is her last year at school, so I've got a few things to look at and decide on for her. I have concerns about finding a place that can cope with her physical disabilities. Yeah, that she's now entering the adult world and what that might look like for her. So, a little bit worried. So Transition works with young people in their last year of school. Mm -hmm. It's basically about finding out what that young person wants to do and then trying to make that a reality for them. Okay. So if you think of the perfect life for Damar in a year's time, that's what we're working towards. Okay. She's currently getting the funding for very high needs. At school. At school. Yep. So does she still get some type of funding? Yeah. yeah. So you've got Ministry of Health funding as well at home. The support workers coming in and... Yes. Um, yeah. How, so how much of that do you have? Um, 11 hours. So, Dema, can she be left on her own? No. So she needs full time? Yeah. Okay. What about if she had her own support worker and then they went to somewhere together? So she had that staff person designated to her and then she went somewhere like St Chad's for morning activities, you know, she might enjoy doing the music stuff mm. or that, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so that she's not just alone with a support worker all the time, because that can get pretty boring, I'm sure. Yeah, that's 
Sounds fabulous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So the meeting with Sandy from CCS went really well. Not always easy finding someone that you can click with and acknowledges and appreciates how difficult those decisions are for us as a family and making sure that we're aware of all the support that's available. Good begin. Hi. So we're here at Rotorua Hospital for Demar's ultrasound um, appointment. I think it was crucial for me to understand everything that was happening to her and why it was happening, and so I did have to study things. I did have to ask loads of questions every time we had an examination of some type. And I'm the one that needs to make the decisions for her that will never be taken lightly. So for the last 21 years, I've been there asking all these questions, and so, yeah, I have gathered up quite an extensive knowledge on the medical side of care for, for Damar and you know this child is completely vulnerable and dependent on you to make the right call for her and so that means that you need to understand and you need to be in the conversation so now we don't get spoken to you know we're spoken with and I think that's really crucial. She had a really bad um, stomach infection so I think we're just double checking that it's all gone. Courtney has a reputation in our local hospital and within our DHB for her knowledge and experience right, of raising right. someone with the Mars amount of right. needs. This is where we do our ultrasound scans. Some of her expertise far exceed some of the doctors and the medical staff. It's a little bit numb, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's not things that we can see with ultrasound, yep. um, then my radiologist will be looking at the images mm -hmm. and be writing a report. Okay. And that'll go back to the doctor. So I can see the pig there that's okay. feeding her, the feeding uh, device. She did have a C. diff infection though, so I just assumed that we were just double checking that that's all clear. It said on the request that the liver function when she yep. was in hospital was a little bit raised. Yep. And so they want us to have a look at her liver. Okay. Yep. So before she came in, was she fairly well? She has had a lot of black discharge from the peg site, so I guess we were just eliminating the internal yeah. bleeding. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. So obviously had enough of me. You're okay. It's okay. Good girl. I think I've got enough information. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much for your help. Good girl. You've done really well. We did prepare for Demar's funeral in 2007. She was going into a surgery where she only had about a 50% chance of survival. So we went prepared to ensure that we upheld her mana. It just felt like we needed to be prepared. So we didn't let her down should the worst happen. I won't do that again. I won't anticipate her death. That was tough. Mm. It's hard to be, you know, I can fight all day, every day, and I do. But it's hard to be in that space and be grateful, yeah. Because they're conflicting emotions, so it's hard. But I'll do it, and I'll continue to do it. Yeah. My husband's taught me to take things as they come and not to worry about 
what if this happens and what if it doesn't? It's a lot of energy that I was using, but yep, certainly I've had lots of issues with anxiety. Yeah. And now my anxiety is usually from a happy place. Can you help? Um, yeah, can you take those two bags and the bottle? I think love is the reason for it all, actually. Yep. My husband, Matetu, is gentle and he's very kind. He's not a man of many words, but it's yeah. just everything to me. Yeah. I'm so grateful for him. Some of my family over the years have said, no, you know, you're too much for taking on that. And I said, oh, it's more about the ma, really, for me. Uh, yeah, he's just... Yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> I remember hearing in our early days somebody saying um, how lucky I was because, you know, I'd found a man that accepted us and I always thought that um, he was lucky <laughs> to get to have us, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, Dad's cool. He's pretty like kicked back, watches TV most of the time. Um, but when I don't do like the dishes right, he'll make me do it again. <laughs> but yeah, he's cool. I think that'll look really nice. Yeah. Down and curled, just because your hair's in really good condition. Yeah, not like. <laughs> Moxie, yeah. she's cool. Moxie is Courtney, my dad, Matisu's wife. She's nice to talk to, like, she understands. She like, oh, yeah, I've been through that, she can help me with that. Yeah, she just keeps going. Doesn't stop because she's having a bad day. Yeah, she's an inspiration, most. Am I saving yours? Yes, please. Just My family look after me so well so that I can look after Damar. I have a bond with all my kids, but I guess because Damar communicates differently, we're more in tune with each other, I guess. She's given me much more than I could ever give her. When you see the struggles that she goes through, Life isn't so bad. So for us, our, all our kids are always first. Everything is around the kids. Yeah. Hi, Mum. Hi, my darling. How are you? Oh, good, good. How's everybody there? Good. Oh, good. that's good. So that um, the other day when we went into the hospital for that ultrasound on her abdomen, that's come back all clear. Oh, that's Yeah. Good. Yeah, we were talking uh, about all of you last night at our potluck dinner and, um, and I was just saying how proud I was. And all your aunties and uncles. <laughs> you would have been really pleased to hear what they had to say about you and our girl. Just so strong, my darling, and so loving. You know, I often look at you and think, wow, is that really my girl? I'm so proud of you. I'll take my hat off to you, darling. Thanks, Mum. All right. Love you, darling. Love you too. All right. Bye. Bye, darling. Oh my god, I knew that was coming too. God. Sorry. What does your time look like, Courtney? Um. <laughs> uh, maybe getting a meal with my husband. Um, watching TV. <laughs> I 
Mm. I don't know. Mm. We, 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 we've talked about prioritising that sort of stuff. Yeah. We've talked about it, but mm. it doesn't always happen. I think the intent is there. We know how important our relationship is and um, our communication is amazing. So I talk to him about everything as he does to me and that's our connection. We need a home of our own um, so we can make some alterations for the ma to the, her living environment, her living space. Uh, she's getting bigger. She's going to need uh, wider corridors and doors and bigger uh, hoists and all her equipment and stuff. And we can't just fit into normal homes anymore. And it's important that we get a home that we can alter for the ma and we can all fit when all our kids are here. And Somewhere stable, and hopefully, when we get some more calls in about 20 years, you know, 50. they can come 50 years whenever. <laughs> I'm really proud of my family. We've come from a place that was a bit hard, and we didn't quite know how to get through some stuff, and we've learned how to do that now. I guess I just want to show who we are and what we've done in the hope that if there's any other family that's struggling maybe or that watches this and may need something and we may need to be able to help. We have a, an abundance of joy in our house. We have more joy than any other emotion in our house. We've got some pretty cool kids, so... We find joy in the craziest places every day. Damar gives me joy just by looking at her. This child that's been through so much that can't do a thing, apparently, gives the most. I need to speak. It's not always... Uh, in a fight, it is just to make sure that we're represented in the conversation. And I know how important that is now. Initially, this journey made me fall into the shadows because I was so unsure of myself and unsure of this new world that we were embarking on, you know, and the medical stuff, and I, it was all very overwhelming. So I just listened and nodded and then it felt unfair because I didn't know what I was agreeing to. And so it just starts from a place of um, struggle, I guess. I'm happy to use my voice now. And so now I know my self-worth. I know my role. And I'm OK, I sit in a good place with myself. <laughs> was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.